In this video, we are going to be looking at work done by forces while an object is on a slope. Please watch the video right until the end because at the end I will be showing you how to calculate the normal on the object while it is on a slope. It is not part of our actual questions and the answers, but I need to show you how to calculate that. Right, all the information is on the sketch. A force of 20 newtons is acting at an angle of 20 degrees to the parallel of the slope. The slope has an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal and we have a friction force of 0,5 newtons. You must calculate the work done by the normal force, the applied force, the frictional force and the gravitational force if the block moves 2,5 meters up the slope. I've drawn the free body diagram with the four forces that are acting on the 3 kilogram box. We have our gravitational force, Fg, our frictional force is down the slope because the object is moving up the slope. There's our applied force and the normal force. Please do not draw your normal force vertically upwards when an object is on a slope. You can draw your free body diagram as I have here or you can draw it like that. The difference between the two is the gravitational force has been resolved into its two components. Do not add Fg in if you are putting in Fg perpendicular to the slope and Fg parallel to the slope. This, if this was asked as a question it would be four marks because there are four forces but you are allowed to draw this one as well so then you will have five forces. Please remember the following. The gravitational force parallel to the incline is mg sine of the angle. I'm calling the angle alpha and not theta. I will tell you why just now. So fg parallel is mg sine alpha. Remember sine is down the incline. That's an easy way to remember it. Now before we answer the four questions that were asked on calculating work done by the normal force, the applied force, the frictional force and the gravitational force, if the block moves 2,5 meters up the slope, I want to go through some very important um, information. First, we're going to look at the components of the forces. There are two forces that have components. The applied force has a parallel component, component to the incline and a vertical component to the incline. I've called the parallel one F subscript H and the perpendicular one F subscript V because it's perpendicular. Uh, vertical to the incline. And then your gravitational force, I've done those components in red. We've got Fg perpendicular to the slope and Fg parallel to the slope. As I mentioned just now, the parallel one is Mg sine of the angle of the slope and the perpendicular one is Mg cos. We'll come back to those here. Let's first look at these that I've done in green. You are working in this triangle. So there's your angle, this is your adjacent side, there's your opposite side, and Fa is your hypotenuse. So we were given the applied force is 20 newtons on the previous page. So if I want this component, the, which will give me the force of the applied force acting up the slope, it's going to be the applied force, which is 20 newtons, times cos of 20, because it's a j, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. If we work that out, 20 times cos of 20, we get 18,79 newtons, which acts up the slope. That is the force pulling this 3 kilogram box up the slope. But of course, we have these two acting in the opposite direction. We will talk about those later. The vertical or component perpendicular to the incline, it's opposite over hypotenuse, so we will be using sine. So the applied force, which is 20 newtons times sine of 20, this component is 6,84 newtons perpendicular upwards from the slope. The components of your gravitational force, I mentioned them briefly just now. The parallel one is mg sine of the angle of the incline, which was 30 degrees. Remember, sine is down the incline. Easy way to remember it. So it's mg sine of 30, the incline was 30 with the um, ground. And so it's 3 times 9,8 times sine of 30. This is our value. The force down the incline is 14.7 newtons. We are going to use this value just now in number 4. And then the force 
a gravitational force component perpendicular onto the slope is mg cos. So it's 3 times 9,8 times cos of 30. In these examples with work and energy, we do not have a sign for 9,8 the way we do with vertical projectile motion. So this value is 25,46 newtons perpendicular onto the slope. Now look at this value. Uh, I'm going to be discussing this right at the end when we calculate the normal. It's not part of our question. The normal plus this component plus that component of the weight must all add up to zero because the box is not accelerating in the perpendicular direction. In this little section on this page I've given extra information which is not part of the question but we will use some of it right at the end. Just make sure that you know how to calculate components of forces. It is very very important. The first question that was asked was to calculate the work done by the normal force. We do not need to calculate the normal force to calculate the work done by the normal force because the angle cos theta, the angle between the normal force and the displacement is 90 degrees and you know that cos of 90 is zero. So your normal force times your displacement times cos of 90 is zero joules. Your normal will be perpendicular to the, the box which is on the incline, so the angle between the normal force and the displacement, displacement is 2,5 meters, that angle is 90 degrees. So therefore the work done by any force, which is 90 degrees to the direction of displacement, will be zero joules. So we did not need to work this out. But I am going to explain to you right at the end how to work it out and it is very important that you need to know how to calculate the normal when you have a force at an angle to the, uh, per to the incline. Second question, work done by the applied force. Now we have the value of the applied force, it is 20 newtons. The displacement up the slope is 2,5 meters. Let us substitute our values. Work done by the applied force is F applied delta x cos of the angle between these two. That angle is 20 degrees. So all we substitute in is the 20, the displacement, and cos of 20. There is your answer. We do not have direction. Remember, work is a scalar. The work done by the frictional force. The frictional force was 0,5 newtons, and it's down the slope, parallel to the slope. So WF, remember, your subscripts must look like subscripts. They must be tiny, and they must be lower down. If your subscript does not look like a subscript, a lot of you are drawing the subscript too high. They are going to subtract many marks for that and you are going to be throwing away marks. So please be careful. Do not throw away marks due to unnecessary errors like that. Work due to the frictional force is the frictional force times delta x times cos of theta. We are using the same equation every single time. Frictional force, 0,5 newtons, was given. The displacement up the slope is 2,5. And the angle between these two, the frictional force and the displacement, is 180 degrees, which is negative 1. Multiply out and you get negative 1,25 joules. Just leave your answer as a negative. And then you will have full marks. The work done by the gravitational force. Now the gravitational force has got the two components, Fg perpendicular, and FG parallel as we showed you in on the first page. I'm just going to put that back quickly. There we go. The parallel component down the slope and the perpendicular component onto the slope. Remember these are the two equations to calculate them. This um, alpha that I'm using is the 30 degrees. It's not the angle between the force and the displacement. It is the angle of the slope. Okay, so when we want to calculate work due to the gravitational force, it is both components of the gravitational force. So you do not have to write out all of this every time, because we know that this component, where the gravitational component is perpendicular to the slope, we're going to have cos of 90. Fg perpendicular, delta x cos of 90, that gives you zero. It is only the parallel component down the slope that does work. The perpendicular component does no work on the box because it is perpendicular to the displacement. 
For further discussion, we are going to look at how to calculate the normal force when you have a force acting on a box on a slope and your force is also at an angle to the slope. You might be asked to calculate the coefficient of friction between the box and the slope, so you will need the normal force for that calculation. I haven't asked you to calculate that, but we're just going to look at how to calculate the normal force. You first of all have to calculate the vertical component of the applied force. Here's our applied force. It's 20 newtons that makes an angle of 20 degrees parallel to the parallel of the slope. So we're going to use this angle and we want the opposite, we have the hypotenuse. So we're going to be using sine. Opposite over hypotenuse is sine of 20. Just make Fv the subject of the equation, so it's 20 times sine of 20. And so the vertical component of your applied force is 6,84 newtons up away from the slope. The forces acting perpendicular to the slope all add up to give you zero newtons because these are the three forces. This object is not moving in that plane. It's not accelerating in that plane. Therefore, F net for these three perpendicular forces is zero. So they add up to zero. I've chosen up away from your surface as positive. So these two are in the positive direction and this force is in the negative direction. So normal force plus that vertical component of the applied force plus your gravitational perpendicular component all add up to zero. I've taken this over. So normal plus your vertical component of the applied force equal Fg perpendicular. Remember to make these look like subscripts. I cannot stress that enough. So Fn is our only unknown, the normal force. We've calculated the vertical component. There it is. We calculated that value. I will just put up the calculation quickly. We did it there on the second page where Fg perpendicular is equal to Mg cos and this angle is the angle of the slope. All right, so there it is. So Fn is your subject of your equation. You just take this over or you subtract 6,84 on both sides and your answer for your normal is 18,62 newtons. If the applied force was parallel to the slope, running along that dotted line, not at an angle to the slope, but parallel to the slope, then your normal would just have been equal to Fg perpendicular. Just simple because we would not have had this component. This component of your applied force makes your normal have a smaller value. If your applied force had been in the opposite direction, if the applied force was coming down, then this Fv would have been in the opposite direction and your normal would have had a, a greater value than what it has here. I'm not going to do an example like that. I just want to add that if you have benefited from this video, would you please subscribe and click on the bell so that you can be notified when I upload new videos, which is going to be very often now. I'm going to try to uh, put as much content up as possible as the May-June exams are going to be upon us very soon. And then please could you share these videos with friends. I want to help as many students as possible. Your teachers don't have much time to do extra examples and extra work with you because they are rushing to finish the syllabus. The syllabus is huge and there's very little time. So please work on your own and use these videos um, as an aid to help you.